I'm doing. Right now I'm mixing Mod Podge and white paint together. Paintbrush suited and shaped for this. I am doing an Argyle cup. Later, we'll have a water slide. And I don't know if we'll just do micas or if we will do glitter. Probably thinking just micas, but we shall see. But first, we have to get the glitter on. And I'm not going to sit here and do a whole bunch of this and expect you to watch it and yada, yada, yada. And take, you know, three hours to do a tutorial. So, what I am going to do is get whatever this is off my cup and paint it with the Mod Podge and then we will do the glitter and I'll do a couple of them and come back and show you uh, what it looks like when it's done and before we move on to the next step because like I said I don't want this to be you know like an hour long tutorial like the Tangram Cup was. So just fill in your spot. And these will probably take <gasps> yikes and I just spilt my glue everywhere. Yay, you got to watch that. Part is it's got paint in it. And I don't know why this batch of Mod Podge that I got is so watery, but it's horribly watery. But it works. I mean, it's it's good stuff. I mean, it works as good as Mod Podge does. But Bear in, with, bear in mind, yeah, I'm cleaning, so. Alright, so. We are back. Crisis averted, mess cleaned. Now, we have to redampen our Mod Podge just to make sure that the glitter adheres. And I was saying before I totally wrecked everything, uh, we'll probably end up going over this twice with these glitters. Um, because see white 
right, now I'm gonna turn you off and I'm gonna finish. Okay, so we're back. The white is all done. Okay, and then I took off the squares that I'm going to need for the light green. And now I'm going to do a light green and turn you off until the next step, which would be the dark green. So. I mixed a little bit of green paint into my Mod Podge. Um, here we go. like the tan room cup if you have not watched that tutorial the best thing to do is to let your glitter dry let your mod podge dry and then take an exacto knife and go along the outside of your pattern and remove it that way you can do it all one color at a time and but then you do not have to worry about your Mod Podge drying out to the point that it pulls your glitter off when you have a little bit of overlap on your stencil. Where if you don't cut it and you go to pull it off, it's all one piece and it ends up pulling your glitter off as well. It really stinks. But it's going to take two coats, just like anything I do with Mod Podge. But that's it. That's what it'll look like. And I'll be back whenever it's time to change colors. All right. So we are done with the light green. Moving on to the dark green. This is what we look like so far. Once again, I waited till it was dry. Used my X-Acto knife. Went around the stencil. Pulled it off. And I'll do one of these and then I'll see you in the next part of the video. I also went a little bit darker being that this was going to be darker. Did a little bit darker on my Mod Podge. Added a few more drops of green to it. to get too much excess because then you get glitter bumps. And excuse the noise. School's over. You would think that I would get completely prepared and not wave the caps on my glitter. I love this glitter. I really do. I love that color. In fact, to run over the colors that I'm using today, um, two are from Hobby Lobby and one is from Walmart. Uh, my light green is Lucky Green and it's from Hobby Lobby. My white is Extra Fine Diamond. Is from Hobby Lobby as well. And my darker green is Emerald from Walmart. And let me finish knocking this out and I'll be back. Here it is. Now once 
it completely dries, the dark green, I'm going to go in here with a brush and brush all the loose glitter off. You can see a little bit of dark green on the white, but that's okay because I made sure that everything was dry in between colors. So my green's not going to stick to my white. That's just loose glitter. And I'll take a large brush similar to this and just brush off all the loose glitter once the dark green's dry. And then I'll seal it and move on to the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do today is get this cup ready and pinstripe it so we can be ready to do the water slide and the, I don't know if you can see it, I have a very faint line marked out here. That's where my center stripe is going to be and what I'm going to do is a small amount of epoxy with some of this awesome gorgeous mica powder in it. A little bit of green alcohol ink to tint the epoxy itself and maybe, maybe some of that chunky glitter. Maybe. But first I want to get my stripes going. That way any little tails can be hidden underneath that. And all this is it's nail tape. You get it in a massive pack. This is like a 32 pack from Walmart. It has just about any color glitter that you could want. And I just have the black and the gold out. Now what I am going to have to do is use my Cricut and make a larger band here because on the outer side of the green when I'm done I want to put a small black band on each edge and then run a gold band down the center of that but that won't be until the finishing steps this however can go on now and I don't worry about fancy I just to hold a cup I take a dish towel or a washcloth and roll up the ends, leave the middle, let it catch it like a hammock, and it holds it. Okay, where are, make sure we're still in frame here, because I'm going to have to get close on this so I don't truly mess it up. And I have some flaws in this, and it, it eats me alive, because if I had noticed it before I epoxied, I could have just scraped that off, but it's just where my glitter went over a little bit, but... I think that's the only one that may not cover up with pinstriping, but we shall see. I will attempt to not be a perfectionist. We'll see how that goes. try to do this without getting my arm in the way too bad. So I'm going to do them in long strips, and actually I'm just going to do it. That way I don't keep unrolling it. I'm going to turn it this way because that's the way I want to lay it. And I want it to lay right on the line. A little bit 
too far to come off. That's all right. Forgive me, I'm blind, and I have to get right on top of it to see. So you do this, you line it up. You take your exacto knife and clip it. And then of course when you go to push it down, it decides to shift a little bit. It's all right. It does stretch too, by the way, so. Now, oh, see what I did there? Sharp right. Now what I did is after I epoxied it and it dried, I wet sanded it real quick and got rid of any little bumpies and that's really what that green is is just one of the edges where I had pulled off my template and it left a little wrinkle but see all right that's it for how I'm going to do the gold I'm going to go ahead and finish the gold and then I'll come back and show you some of the black okay so I finished the gold and I started the black now what you have to do with the black is you have to find the middle. Okay, the way I do that is, okay, find the middle right there. And then we go through the middle. And that's your middle up top. And then if you're not laying right, you just lift it up and bring it back down. Okay, we'll do one more. And then I'll finish the rest of it up on the camera. Okay. Now we've done determined that that's our middle. to where the middle would be up top. Okay. And just like I did before, I'll trim all my tails off when I'm done. Okay, so we find the middle. Okay. And you go all the way to the top, and it would cross where the middle. Oh, see how that doesn't, that's not the middle. It doesn't meet until way up high. So, forgive the stomach noises. It does that now. And see, you can find your middle here, too. So, and then right there at the top of your glitter. Okay, that's that. And I'll come back when we're ready for the next step. All right, so there's our pinstripes. black and gold and I've cut them off even with my glitter lines now this brings me to something guys these cups are handmade they are going to have a margin of error they're going to be unique they're going to be one of a kind you cannot reproduce it so 
try to keep that in mind when you're doing it. It's not going to be perfect. I get you. I do. It's, it's hard to walk away. But when we have a little line that's off and we have to cover the seam, it's going to be that way. And, you know, I've got a little bleed out there. Okay, guys, what I was saying before I got so rudely interrupted by the camera dying was these are homemade items. These are handcrafted items. They are not going to be perfect. There are flaws. But most of the time, they're flaws that only we can see. We cannot be perfectionists because we cannot make everything perfect. We cannot replicate what we've made or anything like that. So, point of all of this is, is don't beat yourself up if it's not perfect. Now, somehow I picked up a piece of paper and it stuck to. Where did it go? It stuck to one of my gold pinstripes. It must have fell off after I got done rubbing it. Hmm. Anyway, um, what I've done is pinstripes, and then I made for my gap. I cut the edges of my glitter, and then I, like I said, I made a spot for my gap. And see, that's going to bother me because that is not a straight line. See? See what I mean? We're going to beat ourselves up over little things that in the end aren't going to matter because we are going to have vinyl over the edge of it. Right? Right. So, there's our straight line. Going to mix the vinyl or mix the epoxy put on there we'll be back when i'm done and go on to the next part of the video okay guys i changed plans here let me get some alcohol let me get epoxy off my hands um instead of using the mica what i did is i found a epoxy color that i forgot all about as i was going through my stuff and I'm going to use it instead, and I don't think I'm even going to use the glitter. Um, it is a brand that I had bought in a kit at Hobby Lobby back a long time ago. And um, I actually started using it whenever I was making gun and knife scales and grips and uh, tables. So uh, it's actually called uh, Lumiere by Jacquard and this is metallic olive green and of course it's backwards because I've got the camera turned around because I'm using my phone now because the camera died um but it's really really pretty color of green and it's got that metallic shine in it so I don't think I'm going to put the glitter in it now the problem with this is, is it does stay opaque, so I'm not sure hmm. my experiment is uh, dinging in the back of my head, but yeah, you want to experiment, you want to do this, so you see what I'm doing, I'm putting a little bit of the powder. This makes it shimmer a little bit more, and I'm hoping we'll take some of the opaque out of it. I think it's going to. I really, really do. And it mixed up really good here. Wow. Wow, I'm happy. Okay. So, I don't think I'm going... Mm. We'll see about a glove. You know, you think, oh, it's just a little spot. I don't need a glove. And then it gets everywhere. And you end up screwing everything up. 
but we shall see here if we can do this with the popsicle stick baby. Try not to let it spread. Of course, that's exactly what I'm doing is spreading it. about dripped it in all the wrong places. Yep, it's time for a glove. I tried. And that wasn't even, that was five mils that I mixed up. I knew I wasn't going to use it all, but I would rather have too much mixed up and colored than not enough and have to um, go back and redo it. Now what I'm doing is I'm making a little swirl because this uh, pearl keeps whatever pattern you put in it. I used to love it whenever I was making tables and um, gun grips and knife scales because you could put like metallic flow look and it was really cool. I don't think it's really going to do much here on this turner because it's turning. But we will see. Um, I'm going to do because this is freaking me out. A little bit of alcohol and clean up where I spilt or dripped just so it doesn't run off of the tape before I come in and take the tape off. Because it's really close to the edge here. And this appears where my water slide's going. And I want nothing but pristine white up there. Alright, um, trying to put this right down there. Heat gun. Uh, you like my trash? And then on this side, Santa Claus. Let's heat it up so it'll flow. To get nice and even. Now, what I'm going to do when this comes off is I'll do my water slide. And then I'll put a layer of epoxy over everything. And then what I will do is take some black vinyl and lay my horizontal stripes. And then I'm going to take the gold pin striping and go right down the center of that black stripe. So I will still see you back when it's time for the next step. And in 40 minutes, I'm going to come in and take this tape off. So y'all have a good day. I will be back for the next step. All right, y'all. It's time to go on to the next step, which is the water slide. This is the part that always makes me nervous. Get your, get your cup wet, of course. 
Of course, of course. Okay, everything moves. And then your water slide, after you've sealed it and everything else, goes into the water according to package directions. Mine says 30 to 60 seconds. I typically go 60 just to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. Try to keep the cup wet because the wetter the cup, the more you can slide it around and make sure it goes where you want it to and you don't tear it. All right, give it a couple more seconds and they're upside down. Ah, oh, kitty's in here to help me. All right. Oh, and see, it's already trying to slide off. I used individual cut on this and I really shouldn't have. So from now on, ah, what I will do is cut it as one large. I'm just going to get it started, kind of, kind of hanging off there. Once again, make sure my cup's really wet because this is going to need some work around. To come off in one large piece. Sorry, my husband just came home and I had to holler at him that I was recording. Alright, and you wiggle everything around and get him where you want him. Keep it wet so it don't tear. And you don't look like Kathleen that was right up against her. Your sweetie little hat. Oh, get back down there. Keep very wet, like I said, because it will tear very easily. Okay, now I'll sort of this little guy that went out, his clover. Suck up a little bit of the excess water now without sticking it to my tacky epoxy. back off a little bit like sliding back where he belongs. Okay. 
The cat seriously thinks she needs to come up on the table and help me. Alright, there's that one. Yikes. Don't know where all that come from, but it needs to go away. It come off of my turner where I spilled glitter. Because we want nothing but white on this cup. Water, water, water. little bit more so it leaves us equal. And then the other one will go right there. All right. Okay. And with that, just make sure you get all the water it up. And then we have got, got to, got to let your water slide dry. If you do not, it will haze and it will crack and it will look like poo-poo. See what happened there? My shamrock decided to come apart and move. Alright, 
so just because I want to see what it looks like turning. We'll do that for one go around. my vinyl on my Cricut and I just wanted to show you how quick and easy this nail tape is again because I, well, I really like it. I'm just going to lay that down in the middle and I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to stretch it all the way down here lay it down in the middle middle okay run my finger down it and it is that simple Just trim off my tails I'm going to put them on this cut. And once the water slide is completely dry after a day or so, uh, I'll epoxy it. And then we'll be done with this cut. But the thing with water slides, if you're doing it on something you have not epoxied yet, you can put it in the oven at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes and bake it on and then you don't have to wait but i've already had a i already have layers of epoxy on this and the oven would reactivate and you know, i would have a god-awful mess if you like this tumbler or have one you want to see me make comment down below Subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.